Hey there, folks. I got another backlight kit. So, what I have today, if you couldn't tell by either the title or this cable here, is I've got another TV out kit. Uh, this one for the DMG. So officially, this kit is known by the god-awful name of RIPS V5 um, because I think they got that from me. But uh, I don't like it because I don't think add appending a version number to every single kit they put out is a good idea. But anyway, here's what we get as far as the cable goes. On one end, you've got regular composite RCA uh, yellow, white, red cable, and then on the other end you have the link port connector and an audio jack connector, uh, standard 3.5 millimeter TRS stereo connector. Uh, but the idea is you plug this end into the link port, this end into the headphone port, and then you enable your TV out, and you can play your DMG, your original Game Boy, on the big screen. Uh, now beyond the cable, we also get do, 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 do. got a few things here. Got some cards. Uh, I did get this kit from Retro Game Repair Shop, or at the very least, they sent it to me to check out. Um, big thanks to them. We've got card. You know, you, you use your code RGRS10 at checkout for 10% off your first order. Uh, I've also got an affiliate link not an affiliate link, an affiliate code in the description. Um, you can use that as a discount as well, um, or neither, and you know, buy it elsewhere, I don't care. Um, but we also get this new warning card that they've been putting in all the kits because you need to test the kit before we install it in case there are defects, because even though these are tested all at the factory, um, stuff can happen in shipping. Uh, I've also got included some brand new uh, DMG membranes for the buttons. These are not included with the kit, but they were included with my order and then I dropped them into the box because I wanted to remember to install them. But this is the V5 TV version. Uh, I think dropping the V5 and just having a TV version would have been good enough, but here we are. And here's what we get. We get big two strips of double-sided tape like normal. We get a bracket included. You've got the front board replacement that has the button contacts, uh, the connectors for the screen kit and the DMG, and then the rotary encoder that controls the kit itself. And then in the baggie, we've got a couple wires, the ribbon cable to connect the big board to the DMG, and then the actual kit itself. Now, here is something, I will probably go into this in a little bit more detail once we get there, but there's something different about this kit compared to the V4 iteration um, that I so affectionately referred to as the Q5 kit. I'm actually not 100% sure how this bracket goes. I'll have to figure that out later. Um, but this is using yet another different screen. Um, and the resolution of this screen is not as great as the Q5 version. So there are some differences that I'll point out once we get there. But this connects to this. And then you just plug it into your DMG. Uh, now... Let me set this aside gently, and let's meet tonight's donor. So I've got this DMG that we're going to be installing this kit into, and now you're looking at, you're probably looking at this going, gee Mako, that already has a backlight kit. Yeah, you're right, it does. Uh, this is either a V1 or a V2 of the same kit, uh, I don't remember which and I didn't label it. So we're gonna take it apart, we'll find out. Um, but another thing that's gonna be a little bit different is I, I feel like I'm repeating myself. I feel like I'm making the exact same video over and over. So I'm gonna do this one a little bit differently. 
I'm gonna tear this Game Boy down, I'm gonna get this kit swapped out, and I'm gonna cut most of that out. If you guys want to see start to finish what one of these mods looks like, um, I've got dozens of videos on the subject. Feel free to click through and take a look at one of my other videos, but it's just, I don't know. It. I feel like it's time to change, so we're gonna try that out with this video. And um, I do promise that I will interject whenever something unique comes up with this kit. But otherwise, I'm just gonna tear this apart and I will uh, talk to you again when we get to an important part. Um, but before I leave you, one thing I do want to mention, this is an OEM shell. There's no reason you can't use one of the IPS ready uh, Game Boy shells. Um, there's no reason you can't use one of the generic aftermarket Game Boy shells. I just didn't in this case because I, I have no need for whatever kit is in this Game Boy. So, figure we might up upgrade it. Oh, this is a V2. No, this is a V1. <laughs> uh, maybe I shouldn't have used this one. Oh well. We'll get there. Uh, as far as taking apart the Game Boy, just pop the back off. If you're not reshelling it, you can just leave this here. Uh, a stock Game Boy, uh, this connector would actually come off the back end instead of the front. It'll come off either here. I'm not going to pull it out because this connector is a pain in the butt and it has caused me to bleed multiple times. So I'm going to leave that in there and I just disconnected it from the front because this one's already backlit. Alright, so here's one of the parts where I'm interjecting. This is something that I thought I noticed with these kits a while back, uh, but now that I have this apart, and I'll have to look up when I originally did this mod, I feel like it's been less than a year, but I honestly don't know anymore. This little rubber spacer thing is supposed to stick to the board itself, and it has stuck to my shell because it is literally eating away at the plastic. Um, you can see as I'm pushing my tweezers in, it's eating in there. So I, this is, if I leave this long enough, it's going to destroy my shell. It's gonna continue eating through. I forgot buttons were in there already. Um, it's fine now. I don't see anything on the outside and this is a pretty beat up shell. So it's no real great loss, but that is, that is a concern. Um, that I think looks like they addressed with the newer kits because with the new kit we have regular foam instead of a big block of rubber. I don't know what that is but if you did one of the old kits uh, it might be time to take apart your Game Boy and double check that. I can't get that out either. It's like it's bonded. Um, in this case, I'm going to leave it, and then I'll take apart this Game Boy again in, I don't know, another year or two, see what happens. But if you have one, I highly recommend not using that part. Alright. So this is soldered in because I was doing an experiment with this particular kit. I ended up fixing the reversed colors on the board itself uh, so I don't have to do any modification to my DMG but I also soldered the screen to this board so this is this is not going anywhere this is this is permanent but let's go ahead and get the testing done I'm gonna jam some batteries in here There's a quick little roll to make sure they're all seated. I don't recommend these batteries, by the way, but they're charged and they were on my desk, so that's what we got. All right. So 
Set this all aside. This is the exact same cable I already have, so I'm going to be reusing my existing cable. Jam that in there, maybe. Have I ever mentioned that I absolutely hate these connectors? These are the worst part about making a modification to a DMG. in there, pop the game in, hold this up so it doesn't get shorted, and there we go, seems to be working. Alright, so now that we know the kit's working, let's go ahead and continue with the install. Uh, I hate having to disconnect that, because now I'm going to have to connect it again. Alright. Shouldn't be too bad. Alright, so on this end... Alright, so if you're using a stock shell, there are a few modifications that we have to make to it. First and foremost, we have to cut off these two screw posts. Uh, just take some flush cutters, bingo, bongo, and we have to cut off one of these three supports for the power switch. Just go in like that, boom. And that should be all the modifications we have to make to this top. Uh, no, that's not true. We also have to cut off the XT connector, the contrast. No, okay. Um, we have to widen up the contrast hole just a little bit. That shouldn't bend that way. And I can't even test fit that because I can't get this thing out. So I'm going to remove this foam. Note that if you're doing this at home with a fresh DMG, leave this foam. It is important. You do not need to remove it. I only need to remove it because mine already has a spacer that's kind of jammed in. But if we do a test fit... Oh, actually it is just barely not clearing. So you can see in that contrast wheel area right at the bottom, it just barely doesn't clear and it kind of rubs. Um, your mileage may vary, yours might be a little bit better than mine, but mine's rubbing so it's getting trimmed. Um, oh, I keep doing this. This is not good for the kit. In my particular case, I am going to file it down, but there's no reason you can't just use flush cutters. That's all we need. Mm. 
I'm gonna go ahead and leave the screen peel on this LCD because chances are very good that I'm reshelling this at some point with that problem in particular. Uh, but now would be the time to remove the screen peel if you want it gone. That gets placed in right about there. Need to jam the bracket in. This should only fit one way. Yep. Oh, I have it backwards. Like I said, it only fits one way. Does the LCD go in it? That's weird. All right, all right, I'll take it. Just like that. Drop your buttons in. And technically this is drop-in with one exception, the speaker. Drop-in is in you don't have to do any soldering. But if you're getting the TV out version of this kit, uh, you should expect to do some soldering because you will have to to enable the TV out function. Let's go ahead and get the speaker wired over. I'm just going to transfer it from my old kit. Fairly certain I just soldered that on backwards, but that's okay. We can work around that. Also need two wires here. I'm just going to snip the ends a little bit and shorten them down so that my install is a little bit cleaner. to solder to these AV and ground pads. And 
just to make sure that I don't get these two mixed up while I reassemble this, I'm going to put a little knot in the end of the ground wire. From here, this is what the tape is used for. Uh, you can use the double-sided tape on the front of the LCD to hold it into the bracket, and then the PCB will hold the bracket into the board. I, Like I said, chances are really good this is coming apart, and because I left that peel on, I'm just going to go ahead and leave it for now. But These need to go out to the side. And then we can drop this in just like that. Flip the speaker around because I did indeed have it backwards. But that's fine. And then jam the screws back in. Alright, it looks like I ended up with an extra screw. I think I had one too many screws when I had this in here because we don't have these two screw posts down by the, um, right above that through hole screw post. So that explains those two extra screws. And for wiring up the actual AV connectors, we will use the link port ground, which is one of these big tabs right here. Use my wire with the knot in it. a nasty solder joint. There we go. And pin three, which is on the left-hand side in the middle. And, ta-da! So as you can see, the LCD is quite nicely positioned, better than uh, my previous install at the very least. No real weird issues with uh, frame dropping or uh, lag. I do see some rather significant ghosting though. That's kind of unfortunate. In fact, this is like one of the worst screens yet as far as ghosting goes. Look at the windows on that house. That's pretty gnarly. Uh, we have brightness controlled by this wheel. Also, press it to change palettes, like usual. Quite a few palettes. 
I actually kind of like them. I like the palettes on this kit. And let's see what happens when we press and hold. We should have an OSD. Yep. We can go through the brightness. Brightness is a little buggy. Because it gets darker. Let me kill my light so you can see that a little bit better. Oh, come on. Well, of course, it's auto adjusting. I don't know if I can lock that. But you see, as I bring it down, it gets 14 is dark and then 13 is lighter. And then as I bring it up, 17 is light and then 18 is darker. That is a very interesting bug. I don't know how that happened. So I think 17 is actually brighter than... I think that's the brightest option. Battery display... I don't know how well that works. It's up there. It's telling me my batteries are half depleted, even though these are fresh off the charger. So I'm going to turn that off. Uh, but these are also nickel metal hydride batteries and not alkalines. TV. Uh, well. Hmm. Uh oh. And then in TV mode, it looks like we have two options. Oh, I like that. I am so glad they finally did that. So we have two options for ratio. I'm so glad they finally let us change this. With original ratio, it gives us... Uh, the original DMG is not quite one-to-one, -one, but it's really close. It's definitely not four-to-three. So with this option, we can go through um, and change it from a full screen display with no black bars, which if you have a widescreen display capture or display or capture hooked up, then it'll be really distorted. Um, but in my case, my retro tink is treating it as four to three and then passing that to my capture card with black bars but we can change it to original ratio to give us the correct screen aspect ratio and um, the retro tank is also adding the black bars so that my widescreen is working properly. Unfortunately, I have no idea how to switch it from TV mode without having TV mode plugged in or TV plugged in. Uh, we can still adjust the colors like usual, if you want to make custom color palettes, I'm not going to bother with that. Close out of there. Nope, got to press and hold. And press and hold, there we go. We can factory reset if your kit is acting wonky. Um, I've seen this on the older kits. I don't know if it's a problem with this one. Quite frankly, because I literally just installed it, I haven't had the opportunity to see if I can trigger this bug. Also, I never got a chance to trigger the bug on the older kits anyway, but sometimes um, when people change these settings and then power off the Game Boy too quickly, it'll corrupt the settings and then your display is just black. But the OSD still works, and the solution is to just go in there and hit factory reset. But you might notice there is no... Um, pixel grid options and that is because the screen that they are using for this particular version of the kit doesn't have a high enough resolution to support pixel grid emulation 
so we just don't have it. And as someone who never liked that feature in the first place, this doesn't, I, I don't really care that it's gone, but I know a lot of you guys liked it and I, I'm sad for you that it's gone because now you no longer have a choice if you want TV out. Granted, You absolutely still have the option to use one of the older uh, V4 or uh, Q5 kits. There it goes. Oh, that is noisy. And this thing, if we pop up the OSD, you notice they're a little bit different. We have horizontal position, vertical position adjustment. We don't have any of that with this. Uh, granted, we shouldn't need it with that bracket that's included, but then again, this one included a bracket too. Um, the OSD tends to time out and close on this one, I notice, but we have pixel effect. Oh, it times out on this one too. I never noticed that. I guess it's just so much slower to time out. But we don't have this pixel effect option on the new version of the kit. Also, the actual size of the display is very different between these two. It's a lot bigger with the Q5. Like just, if you look at the image on screen, it keeps bigger with this kit. That's not a happy noise. So there you go. As far as internal display quality goes, the older version is, is without a doubt much better. Uh, I didn't have a single problem with this Q5 version of the kit, but you know, if you want TV out, that's kind of what your choices are right now. Yeah. Uh, one thing to note with the bracket that's included with the Q5 kit, it puts the LCD a little bit closer to the lens, which results in a uh, slightly better image quality. Uh, the best option would be lamination, but I don't think that's a thing for these kits, but that's quite all right. Let's try something here. So I'm not sure I like, I'm gonna turn that off. I'm not sure I like that you have to enable the TV out mode through the, yeah, you don't get battery display brightness or color adjust in TV out mode. That's kind of weird. Let's flip that on. And then I got my capture again. If we go in here, yeah, we just have those two. We don't have reset or um, brightness or the color palettes. But if I click the wheel, I still can cycle through my palettes. So if you set those up ahead of time, you can still use them. But you can't set them up while you have TV out mode enabled. What I wanted to know was, is there a way to get out of TV out mode without having to plug in a cable? Let's find out. 
I'm also going to go ahead and swap games because I want the flash card. Oh yeah, there you go. It defaults back to the internal screen. So that's the same behavior as the older kits, and that is a good thing as far as I'm concerned. Oh, there it goes. But let us try... the infamous scrolling bar test. Let's see how that looks. So on the internal screen, it does look pretty decent. Um, I don't know, I don't, I don't see any problems with it. Uh, usually when that S hits the left-hand side of the screen, that's issuing an LCD reset command. Um, on older kits, that would result in some flashing, flickering, frame drops, or frame tearing. Don't see any of that here. Let us try TV out. And again, I, I guess that looks all right to me. It's hard to tell through the capture itself or through the preview because the preview window is just not very smooth. Uh, the capture should be a little bit smoother, but I won't be able to tell until I review the footage. So you'll have to, you'll have to uh, make that decision on your own. Let me, that doesn't matter. I'm just gonna power cycle it. So now I want to try Legend of Zelda here. I want to take a look, do my ghosting tests. See, it's funny because this doesn't look that bad. I don't see any of the ghosting issues that we normally see with this game. Um, I wonder if it's just like up and down vertical motion. Nope, I'm not seeing that here either. I don't know what's going on with Pokemon there. This chain though, that looks awful on the actual screen. Let's see how it looks on the TV. Uh, it doesn't look much better on the TV either. Actually, a lot of that doesn't look very good on the TV. I don't know how much of that is attributed to my RetroTINK um, decomb. So don't don't judge too harshly because the retro tink is doing some um, it is modifying my video signal in some ways and I don't really know how to test that without the retro tink because I don't have any other way of capturing composite footage with any modicum of quality um, I'm sure it looks fine plugged into a CRT, but this is not a CRT, and like I usually say, I don't have a CRT, I'm not getting a CRT. It is what it is. Deal with it. But it ain't perfect. Um, when you have this plugged into a CRT, I imagine you'd probably want to just switch the aspect ratio over to full screen, because you only get so much real estate with a CRT compared to like our, our 50 and 60 inch high def TVs. But, you know, you can decide that for yourself. Since I have this plugged into an LCD though, ooh, that is very interesting. That was weird. The text on the TV mode option was all messed up. But yeah, so it's it's not without glitches. That much I'll tell you. It does work pretty good though. I don't know what that little one that pops up is. I don't know why that pops up. 
I guess the one is indicating that this is display one, whereas the uh, video out would be display two. But I don't know. Let's look at our gradients here. So we can flip through the color palettes. So this is the default palette, just grayscale. Oh, that's what the number is. It's your palette preset. That's pretty neat. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. That's an awful palette. Those two colors look the same. Uh, I can see that they're different on my phone, but I can't actually see that they're different in person. This is a good palette. This is the one I'd probably stick with. 27. I also like this one. I don't know. It's comfy. That was 32. Well, that's also an awful palette. And then one. So it looks like we had, what, 36? I stopped counting. I stopped looking at the number. Let us TV mode on. Through those palettes again. Yeah, 36 pellets. There you go. Actually, let's see how this handles a reset. can't get my flashcard to reset. So never mind. Well, yeah, there you go. It's it's pretty nice. I'm digging this so far. Um, with one caveat. I don't like the internal screen. I just don't. I think looking at these side by side, and I knew this was going to happen before I even installed this, uh, but I like the V4 version, the Q5 version, a little bit better. I just think this screen looks quite a bit better than this one. And that's not even counting the pixel grid nonsense. I don't like the pixel grid, but I think the internal screen looks better. But this kit does not support TV out. So if you want TV out, this is probably gonna be the way to go. I think it works pretty nicely. Uh, I'm satisfied with the result. Caveat being that this is still composite out. So, you know, be aware that composite out is probably one of the lowest quality ways to get a video signal to a device or a wire but it's pretty easy it's literally just one wire and you know it is nice that it's 
And then just the link port, you jam that in, you're good to go. But, I don't know. If you want to actually play your DMG on the TV, I think this is probably the way to go. There are other kits. I don't understand. Oh, there it is. Uh, like, for example, the Game Boy Advance TV out kit. Uh, this will work the same. This will also play Game Boy games. But the difference is that this kit does not support uh, adjusting the ratio like this kit does. So if you want to play your original DMG games, no color, just original DMG, then this is absolutely the way to go if you like the original DMG. Uh, one thing I'm not really digging is this cable. It kind of gets in the way. Uh, you have to like slide your hand in between the two. Uh, it might be a little bit better if you separate these a little bit more. But it's still not great. I don't like the full weight of this cable hanging off this because the strain relief doesn't seem to do anything at all. Uh, and it's not sized properly for this cable. But, um... I, I anticipate long-term problems. Not that it would be difficult to rewire this thing. Also, it's a DMG. It's huge. You can just wire up RCA connectors to the Jesus thing if you want. Um, there's plenty of room for that. But yeah, the, the quality is perfectly fine for composite. It's just, it is composite, so get used to that. Uh, oh, let's go do a battle. Let's see what happens. And again, like usual, I am playing with a little bit of input lag, but that's not at all a problem for something like Pokemon. Let's crush this thing! But yeah. Trade-offs. Every single mod has trade-offs. This one is no exception. Anyway, I think that's all I've got. I said I would end up using this video as a trial to do things a little bit differently because I wanted to shake things up and then that didn't really end up happening the way I wanted to, so I don't know. It is what it is. Let, let, let me know if you like what I ended up doing with this thing. I'm going to have to end up doing quite a bit of video editing. Uh, but so on. It is what it is. Uh, and again, thanks to Retro Game Repair Shop for shooting this kit my way to check out. This is, this is neat. I'm, I'm glad I got to experience this. Um, unfortunately, I just... DMGs aren't really my thing. So I don't see getting that much use out of it personally, uh, especially since I already have the Game Boy Advance version. Um, but, you know, if, if the DMG is your thing, this is absolutely the way to go. Uh, they do make some consoleizer kits now um, for DMG, especially if you only want to play it on TV. That's higher quality than this will ever be. Uh, because that this is composite, that's HDMI. But I think they also have some VGA ones. I don't know. I'm digging it. I like it. Uh, have any questions? Feel free to hit me up in the comments. Otherwise, I do have a lot of notes in the description as well. I maintain a full wiki page of every single backlight kit that I've ever gotten my hands on. Um, in fact, I have quite a few backlight kits that I don't even have. I have notes on them as well, but they're more subjective and less, or excuse me, they're more objective and less subjective. But, you know, it's for the sake of completeness, I guess. But there you go. There's that new backlight kit. There's my thoughts on it. I dig it. I dig it. But only if you, only, only if you want that TV out. If you don't care for the TV out portion, then don't bother with the new kit. Go with the old one, it's better. But if you do want TV out, this is pretty darn good. 
Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you next time. Enough rambling. <laughs>